right. Folks, you've had a lot of people here telling you today that stealing is wrong, that lying is wrong, that adultery is wrong. They've been telling you that a lot of things are wrong. But you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that stealing is wrong. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that lying is wrong. I'm not even going to tell you that adultery is wrong. You know what I'm going to do for you folks? I'm going to tell you why it's wrong. Now people often want to know why we were put on this earth. God put us on this earth to be his representatives. We're supposed to live like he wants us to live. We were made in the image of God. So when we're on this earth, we're supposed to bear that image. So why is stealing wrong? Stealing wrong is not wrong because you're just taking it from somebody else. You know, you, that's not a good thing to do. But the reason that stealing is wrong is because God is not a thief. We were created in His image, therefore, do not steal. Now you wonder why a doctor is wrong. Well, it makes breaks marriages, it breaks relationships, it all does all kind of stuff. Sure, it does that. But you really want to know why a doctor is wrong? Because God is perfectly faithful. That's why adultery is wrong. Now people say here that lying is wrong. Sure, lying is wrong, but who cares? Who cares if I lie? The reason that lying is wrong is because we are created in God's image to represent Him. Lying is wrong because God is perfectly honest. And that's why we should not lie. Now the problem is, every one of us lies, steals, commits a doctrine in our hearts. It makes each of us unworthy of God's grace. Now another dilemma that you people might have heard throughout your lives is how can stealing a little thing be the same as committing an axe murder? You might be thinking, you know, Christians tell me all the time, well, all sins are the same. Well, you know, that's not true either. An axe murder is a lot worse than stealing something small or a little white lie. But I'm going to tell you something else. Both of them are lying about God. And that's why they're the same. They're not in the same in severity, but both of them are lies about God. And both of them des deserve an eternal punishment. Now i got a question for you people out there. When you ask God for forgiveness, do you ask Him for justice? Or do you ask Him for mercy? Now you think... You want to ask him for justice because God is a holy and just God. He's going to cast you into hell. Now, how many people out there think that when you ask God, you ask him for mercy? How many people think you ask him for mercy? Nobody? How many think you ask him for justice? Justice. Well, Brad, you got it right the first time. <laughs> the reason that I ask that question is because most people get it wrong. And I think that people that, that didn't even put up their hands probably got it wrong today too. Because people think that you ask God for forgiveness, that you're asking Him for mercy. Well, I got news for you folks. That's not the case. You're asking Him for justice. You think, how can that be? Well, I can explain that to you. You see the coffee bean over there, the little coffee shop? Let's say I were to go into there, and I say, I want a coffee. But you know what, folks? I'm going to tell that lady in there, I don't have any money. You know what she's going to say to me? No coffee for you. <laughs> and you're going to say, what? I just want to You throw away still coffee at the end of the day. I just want one coffee. You're not going to get broke. She's going to say, look, we're in the business of selling coffee. We're just not going to give away free coffee. Yeah, but I really want a coffee. Come on, just one. Okay, here. Don't make a scene. Don't bug me. Gives you a coffee. Well, let's say next day you're walking down here and you want a coffee. You walk in there, you check your pockets, no money. Same lady behind the counter, you say, look, I really like a coffee, but I don't have any money with me. What you going to say? I gave you one yesterday. Yeah, you didn't go broke, did you? Yeah, you're still in business, it wasn't a big deal. Come on, just one more coffee. And you know what? She's going to say, just to get ready, okay, here's a coffee, don't come back. Okay, let's say next day you're walking down the pier, you're going down the pier, you're walking to the coffee bean there, as soon as you step in the door, she's going to say, you, out. 
You know why? Because you're depending on her mercy. And she is just all out of mercy. Now let's say a friend of yours comes by, goes to the coffee bean and says, you know what? Here's a thousand dollars. My friend Cy, that's me, is going to be coming in here and he's going to be wanting some coffee. Okay, now the next time I go into the coffee bean, I'm going to open the door, same lady behind the counter, and I'm going to say, look, I don't have any money with me, but I'd really like coffee. You know what she's going to say? Would you like a donut with that? <laughs> and I'm going to wonder what's going on. Do you know what the difference is, folks? This time there's cash in the till. I'm not depending on her mercy, I'm depending on her justice. And that's the case where we sin. When we sin, you know, we want to serve a righteous and holy God, but we cannot be perfect. But the difference for a Christian is that there's cash in the till. The only cash that can pay for our sins, the blood of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to give you another example between justice and mercy. So we know that we get justice when we ask for forgiveness of our, of our sins. And now let's say you're driving home from here, you're going down the highway, and the police pull you over. Now he can deal with you one of two ways. He can deal with you with justice, or he can deal with you with mercy, but he can't do both. If he gives you justice, mercy is not served. If he gives you mercy, justice is not served. He can't do both. And you know what this cop's going to do? It's going to be a bad day. He's going to give you justice. So you're going to take that ticket. You're going to look at 250 bucks. That's what you got to pay for speeding out here? That's crazy. You take it to court. And you know what? The judge is going to look at you, and he's going to say, you are guilty of speeding. Your fine is $250. And you say, you know what? I can't pay that fine. I don't have any money. Just then, your friend walked into the courtroom. And your friend says to that judge, I have $250. This is for my friend, Cy. And you know what it's going to say in the books? Cy, guilty of speeding, fine $250, paid in full. But you know, folks, that is not the Christian story. You thought I was telling you the Christian story. That's not the Christian story. Because you know what? I'm going to be in that courtroom with my fine of $250. I'm not going to be able to pay. And you know what happens? The judge stands up, takes out his robe, comes down, and he pays that fine for me. And folks, that's the Christian story. That we don't deserve forgiveness for our sins, but, Jesus, but God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to pay for our sins. So that on the books, it says you are guilty of your sin, fine paid in full. Now people think that Christians try and live a good life to get to heaven. Well, that's not true either. Christians try to live a good life in thankfulness for what was done for us. The fine was paid in full. We're guilty. Jesus Christ paid that fine. That's why we're up in this box. Because a lot of people are going to be going to hell. And what we have to do is repent and turn to Jesus Christ so that when we stand before a righteous and holy God, our sins will be paid in full. Now I'll give you one more example and I'll turn this over to somebody else. But I'm sure that walking up and down this pier, you see a lot of homeless people. Some of them don't smell so good. They go, don't go to the bathroom, you know, they might even do it in their own clothes. And you know what, I know a fellow who saw someone like that one day. He saw a homeless person out here. And he said, I'd like some money. And he thought, you know, in good conscience, I can't give him any money. Because he might stick it in his arm. He might put it in his liver. He might snort it up his nose. I can't give him any money. But look, as a good Christian, I want to give him some money. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take him into the store, and I'm going to buy something for him. So you tell this guy to come with you. And he's coming with you. And you want him to stand a little bit away because he stinks. And he goes into the local store here, and the girl in the store, she recognizes him. You know, he's been around here before, and he stinks. And she's kind of looking at him, looking at you. And he goes around, he starts picking stuff off the shelf. And he's coming up to the cash. And he's about to be there. She knows this guy doesn't have any money. And what does she say? Is he with you? You know what he says? Yeah, he's with me. And you know what, folks? When we go and stand before a righteous and holy God, we stink. We're filthy. And you know what? We can say, look at Jesus Christ. And he's going to turn and say, he's with me. We can't go to heaven based on our worthiness, based on our goodness, 
but based on the only sacrifice that could pay for our sins, the blood of Jesus Christ. And I hope, folks, that you are, who are re hearing this message will repent of your sins and turn to Him. I don't know if any of you are paying attention back there, but know this, that God made it certain that you would hear my voice today. You can keep on rocking, but you know what? None of these encounters are neutral. This encounter will either push you towards God or push you away from Him. And if any of you have any questions, please get on the box and I'd be happy to address them. You guys got any questions? You want to talk to me about any questions about God your entire life? you have any questions? I'd be happy to answer them for you. I want you to try and stump me. Be bold. Be bold, man. I have a question. Go ahead. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Satan. Satan? Yeah. I don't believe you. All right. My mother was crazy. Here's my question. Do you have any evidence whatsoever at all that there even is a God? I do. Uh, Where is it? You want evidence that there's a God? Bring it on. Okay. The very concept of evidence is evidence that there's a God. Do you know why? Because evidence... Hang on a second. Let me finish the answer. Wait, let me try to understand. The very concept of evidence is evidence that there's a God. Yeah, that's right. That makes okay. a lot of good sense. Okay, well, let me finish. Let me finish. What does evidence require? Evidence requires truth. Evidence requires knowledge. And I'm saying that you cannot have truth or knowledge without God. Now, you might deny that. Hang on a second. Actually, evidence is what we use to figure out what the truth is. But okay. here's an idea. How about if there's a God, why doesn't he just come and talk to us? He has. Now's a great time. Let's invite him. He has. Let's okay. invite him. Would he come here right here? Because I would love to be a believer. Bring him on. You would love to be a believer. I would love okay, to be a believer. Okay, so where is he? Hang on a second. Let me finish. Now, what I'm saying is that you I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to him. Yeah, okay, well, we are his representatives right now. That's right, so he should come here and speak to us. He is, through us. Where is he? He is, he's speaking through us. I'm listening. Should okay. We, should we wait? Well, you're not listening because you're not answering my questions. Yeah. I'm saying... I want to hear from him, not you. I'm speaking according to what he has revealed to us in his word. 